The sixth question we ask ourselves when doing educational analysis has to do with the pacing of knowledge. Uh, again, make a split on the one side between the boundary strength of pacing. Is it solid, in which case there's a very clear and definite pace set, or is it open, in which case you're far more flexible about how the lesson actually goes in terms of its uh, speed. Now, at the same time as that, you also have to take a look at what pacing is in its own terms. And over here, I'm going to take a look at what I call the momentum of pacing. And to do that, I'm going to work with both how uh, slow or fast something is on the one side in combination with how heavy or light it is on the other. With the basic insight being that if something's heavy, you land up going slower most of the time. And if something is light, you can go faster. Um, and that determines your pacing. And that's going to be played out in terms of a pacing matrix in which we'll explore four different options of uh, pacing in its uh, own terms. Now, in terms of the uh, boundary strength of pacing, what I would like you to do is I'd firstly like you to note that it's pretty uh, logical how you move from selecting something to then giving it some kind of a sequence and then once you've selected and sequenced, you then decide what the pacing is of it. How are you actually going to uh, time the lesson? How are you going to break up the time of the lesson? How are you going to make the lesson go through its paces, as it were? Now, on the one side, you can be very clear about what the pacing is going to be. You can specify the different parts of the lesson and you can say this must take this long, this must take this long, this must take that long. Now notice it doesn't necessarily all have to be fast or all have to be slow. It just has to be strongly specified. You could specify to start off slow and then to move into a quicker zone. That would still be a, a strong boundary in terms of pacing because you're being very clear about what the time requirements are. On the other hand, uh, your pacing could be more open. In this case, what you're doing is you're saying, well, we've got to get from here to here in terms of the, what we've selected and what we've sequenced. But exactly how much time it's going to take, we're unclear on, and we will see as the conditions move and change in the lesson, what the pacing would be. Now, don't make a judgment call about which one of these is better or worse. There are cases where a strong boundary in terms of pacing is a very useful uh, mechanism within pedagogy. And there are other times where an open pacing boundary is crucial in terms of working with your uh, learners and your students. Now, once you get the pacing uh, boundary clear, we do need to move on to trying to understand how pacing works in its own terms. Now, the term I'm using for this is momentum. Uh, and really, all I want to pick up in momentum is the idea that as you are traveling or as you are moving, uh, you, ca you can have the same kind of momentum if you are going moving with a slow and heavy object uh, or with a fast and a light object. So if a heavy object meets you slowly, it can have the same momentum as a light object hitting you um, quickly. And I think there's a real foundational insight into this. And that is to say that uh, a teacher that works with a very heavy topic in a slow way, step by slow step, trying to grapple with the issue, uh, can land up doing the same amount of work as a teacher who's working with the same topic, the same area, but breaks it up into small little elements uh, which she works with in a, in a quick and a light way. Uh, the way I imagine it is if you have to move something across a room from one side to the other, and it is a heavy object in its own terms, uh, what you could try and do is you could try and move that he heavy object very slowly across the room. Or what you could do is you could take it apart each of its little elements and move them quickly across to the other room. Now, the insight is 
is, is that if you move the heavy object slowly across the room, it's probably going to take you around about the same time as breaking it up into its little elements and moving it across the room uh, quickly. And that's the heart of that uh, insight. Now, uh, you have distinct pedagogies which work with these two types of pacing. On the one side, you have a uh, a strong argument that what you should do is spend a lot of time dealing with an issue in its fullness and its complexity. What this means is that students can make meaning, they can grapple, they can start to understand the connections and how things work, and this gives the heaviness to the topic. Uh, it, it enables the students to really grapple with the issue at hand. Other teachers prefer a kind of pedagogy uh, where what they do is they move in a quick and a light way by continually uh, making simple, direct, quick and fairly easy moves each in their own term. But when you step back at the end of the lesson, if you've sustained that kind of pace, you manage to get through a hell of a lot of work uh, very quickly and you can land up in the same space as having grappled with the topic in a heavy and a slow way. Now, uh, if you take slow and heavy on the one side and fast and light on the other side, you can see that really we're working with two different variables. On the one side, we're working with weight. I don't want to use the technical term mass here. Uh, and on the other side, we're working kind of with speed. And again, you can use the term velocity here. Uh, but we're working with fast and slow, uh, speed, uh, heavy and light uh, weight. So let's take a look at a uh, uh, matrix which tries to cap the different, catch the different options using heavy and light and fast and slow. Now firstly, uh, notice that it generates four options. Light and slow, heavy and slow, light and fast, heavy and fast. And the mystery in pedagogy uh, and in education is how to move a student from light and slow to heavy and fast. Uh, and we got some insight into this earlier on in terms of the way that concepts work, where concepts as they build on each other and you start to understand uh, bigger and bigger concepts as holding more and more in them, that gives you the insight into how you move from slow and light to heavy and fast because as the concepts that you're working with become more abstract, become heavier, contain more within them, you can work with those heavy concepts in a fast way because the many of those concepts have become one concept and it's that one concept you're working with in combination with another. Now the two routes that you can do that when you're starting off in a slow and light way is to either Try and increase the weight of what you're doing, but ensure that whilst you're doing that, that you keep the pace slow. Or what you can do is you can keep the complexity level at about the same level, but you can increase the pace at which you're working. Uh, now, both these options will eventually result in a situation where you land up uh, working with a heavy concept which has got a lot of weight within it, which has got a lot of connections and combinations and concepts all wrapped up in it. And you'll be working with it in a fast way because you will have practiced and made meaning with it to the point where you understand what it is and you can work with it. So the shift in pedagogy uh, moves from slow and light into a situation where you move into a fast, heavy combination. So, when working with pacing, firstly ask yourself about the boundary strength. Uh, is there a situation where the pacing is solid, definitely given, or is it open, flexible and adaptable to the situation at hand? Secondly, ask yourself whether the pacing has, uh, is, has a heavy or light content element to it. And secondly, ask yourself, whether it's going fast or slow, and combine those two together to get momentum 